Hey everyone, welcome to Drive Hour Reviews. Today we're playing Gwent, the card game from Witcher 3. And I love card games, you guys. I just love them. When they're well made and they're in strategy games or fantasy games like Witcher 3. All the way back from when I played Final Fantasy VIII was probably the first one I really enjoyed. And as you can see, it's basically the same concept as in the game Witcher 3 itself, but they've really just put a ton of beautiful exterior improvements all over the interaction and even the gameplay. So let's jump in here because I think the, the worst part about playing it in the game Witcher 3 was one, it was a huge time killer, but two, you're playing AI. So AI is only so good. In fact, the best thing they could do with AI was give them better cards than you, but eventually you just had the best cards in the game with the best strategy in the game or whatever, or one of the best strategies. That was it. But now we have this closed beta game they created. They created a standalone Gwent game, closed beta due to the popularity, and then hopefully it'll be out of that soon. And it'll be released to the general public. Because right now, it's fantastic. You get to play players online, and they're way harder than actual AI. So I'm starting off with just one of the starter decks. You don't have the greatest cards when you start off. It's actually hard to get them, of course, like any standalone game. Find a worthy opponent, please. Oh my god. Just my folk have suffered much. Francisco. There is but one punishment for traitors. We give them candy. Love that guy. <laughs> Alright, so if you guys remember, you get to throw away two different cards. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, that's a nice one. I'm going to keep that. And I want another reveal card. Let's get rid of the foot soldiers. Um, higher than base. So I want as many, you know, with Nilfgaard, basically with the spotters and various other things, you want reveal cards to really power up the cards that utilize that. And so right now I'm doing pretty good. I've got this Mangonel. Mangonel. I've got this nice siege card that will attack every time I reveal. Damn it. He's got a resilient card. That's okay. We'll kill him fast. Uh, four strength when, when you use your leader ability. Okay, so we're going to put him down first and then I'll put down... Put down the machine and then I'll put down... I'll start revealing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Well, hope you're ready for how many hits I can hit him right now. I can hit him five times. It's because uh, Emery's I passive or one-time use leader effect. I knew you were gonna try that nonsense, girl. Well, that's okay, cause he's staying alive. Get him. Oh, you hit the wrong one, man. You're supposed to kill this guy. Oh well. So resilience, unfortunately, means he gets to keep that defender to the next round. And I'm trying to That's hit him. Strength, my love. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's not a spy. I don't have any spies right now. Oh! Yeah, might as well kill him now, right? Boom! Scorched Earth, baby! Get out of here. Wasn't even thinking of that, but I always keep that card just in case. And by the way, I have a resilience card too, but just because right there, that little instance, if you reveal your resilience... My resi folk have suffered much. What? Replacing cards. Oh, she just gave me another four power to that center card because she used her leader ability. Not very smart. This guy might be going down for real. Wah, 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 wah. Going down for real. All right, so I can use my resilient card. I'll probably wait until he passes. So what I'm going to do here... I do want my spotters to go up. And I do want... I'm probably going to keep Impenetrable. Impenet or Impera Enforcer. So I am thinking... This guy. There's been a mistake. I'm no mage. 24 to 7. I'm pretty sure he's going to give up at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw my Resilient card onto the Enforcers. So I can keep them for the next round. And start with 11. And he lost his resilience, which means he can't start next round. He really should give up. All I can see so far is his brigade, which is just a normal bronze eight power elf card. That can go anywhere, though. It can go in melee, ranged, or siege. You guys remember the game? Have you played this before? This is such a great game. Ah, he stumped. Nexodar's got nothing. Well, you got 30 seconds left, buddy. So what you gonna do? You're gonna pass. Yeah, he's gonna pass. All right, so that means... He's thinking, I'm going to pass, but no, I'm going to take the Enforcer with me. 
and then I'll pass. 24 to 7. All right, it's a little overkill. <laughs> Just played that first round really well. Now, what's I love about Gwent is typically it's very difficult to win two rounds in a row. Especially with this many cards. I just took Black Infantry and another Brigade. I don't want the Brigade. Because I don't have any spying units in my hand. Zero spying units. Can I get a start? Fine. There's been a mistake. Might as well see what he's I got. No oh, he's got Geralt! Oh, I have Geralt in my deck. I just don't have him in my hand currently. I probably will not since I have one more draw. What the hell is this? What the hell is that? Hmm. I'm not sure what to do at this point because I got nothing I really want to waste. Might as well play this guy. I don't have any spots. I have a couple ambassadors. Oh, what was it? Fireball trap ambush when a real local right. unit appears on the opposing side. Hang on. I'm trying to read this shit. Shnay. When a revealed non gold unit appears on the opposing side, remove three strength from it and spawn a commando neophyte on a Okay. Wow. That's a really good card. Um, so at this point, I wanted to waste cards where we're basically neck and neck, and I don't like the fact that he has Geralt up there, because Geralt is an untouchable card. Um, but I don't want to waste any more. I do want him to play one more card. I'm not going to win this round, obviously. But I didn't play everything I did. All right. We'll call it good. I might have let him off a little easy that time. I wanted to play one more card, though. Just tough when he... F I have nothing to clear weather. I know what you guys are thinking. For some reason, I noticed... Other. Why would you waste a card like that? That's a really good card. For some reason, I'm noticing in this closed beta game, it's actually less common to utilize the weather cards. It used to be really common in the game. You basically had to have a weather clearing card. In this one, it's not so such a big deal. There's my spy. That is curious. Get rid of this guy. What do you give me? Nice! Alright, so we're gonna go probably Spearman. And then we're gonna go Ambassador. And then we're gonna kill the Ambassador with the Brigade. Wait. Yeah. And then he'll gain four strength. Excellent. In that order. And then we'll put down. What's the point of the freaking cow unless you kill it? Can he kill his own cow? I wonder if he has a card for that. Let's see if we can stop him. I think the spy might stop him. So the spy is going to add 12 to, to the spearman. Death to old one! Okay, that wasn't a very powerful move. So we're going to play the ambassador. Next then we're going to kill the ambassador. Wait, I got to play the brigade first, then kill the ambassador. Brigade Ambassador, then we're going to hit him with a Foot Soldier, and then last up we'll throw a Spotter down, and hopefully that's enough. Everything all right. Nice. Okay, so... He's going to be a 9 for the Spy. <laughs> this is going well pretty well. Round 3, perfectly played round 1. Round 2 was just a softie. Geralt's already going to hit him. Pushed him back, knocked him down by one strength. Did he even hit him? Huh. Okay. Um, oh yeah, he had uh, he had a shield against that, so he should have knocked back the brigade instead. Um, all right, we're going to hit that spy. Ah, yes, yeah, it's going so well. Thirty-seven. He better have like scorched earth in there or something to kill my nineteen. He might. I hope not. Any last words? Plays Geralt. So that means I'm going to throw the foot soldier down to just Off keep to the front damage again. to a minimum. He might have like a slash all front row or something. What's it called? Dragon Claw? What is that card? What is that stupid card? He did. He had a slash row and he slashed his own row. I'm pretty sure I won. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> 
Lacerate. It was lacerate. So. There we go. And there we go. There's classic Gwent. Three round Gwent. He's got to win two rounds. Good game, man. And right now they've got this thing where if you if you say good game, you, they give a extra five ore, which you can use to craft specific cards. And then as you level up, they also will give you rewards. This right here is going to give me ore. Yeah, 15 ore and then experience points. Level up. And then somehow I think every time we play, we get gold. So I have 50 gold and every 100 gold I can go into the shop. And I can get... I can get these barrels, these kegs. Oh, I have one. Must have been a prize from one of the rounds. I didn't even see it. Now this, check this animation out. All right, we got Biting Frost. Already have that card. We have wow, Dwarven Mercenary. Gain two strength for each dwarf unit on your side of the battle. I only have one of those, I think. Combat Engineer. So this is nice. I don't have this card yet. It's just like that uh, Resilient card I had. The Adrenaline. Except that he actually is a unit that has power, which is nice. nice. What? Oh my gosh. The Drowner can take a unit to his side? That's going to get filthy. Good lord. All right. So then, and then after you get whatever the cards are, you get to choose one out of these three to keep. So we've got a Wild Hunt Rider, Immune to Weather, and it plays all Wild Hunt Riders, but there are only three, so you need some sort of booster. Sheldon Skaggs, and then Commander's Horn. We don't need that. So I already own those two, so I'm going to take the Wild Hunt Rider. There we go. There's the barrel. Human spot is... Human battle by. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I enjoyed killing those guys in the game. Is that just making me sadistic? <laughs> I didn't realize they were nice, friendly bumpkins until halfway through the game. Then I was like, "Oh, that's why you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to kill them." All right, here you go. Once you have your collection, you can go into your deck builder and you can modify these decks. So, for example, we just got a monster. So we can go to our monster deck and we can go through here and check out and see where he's at. We have the Necker. I don't have another Necker though, so there's no point in his ability. There it is, the Drowner. That is that is so good. That is fantastic. The Fiends, okay. Yeah, here we go, Vesemir. So he plays Eskel and Lambert from the deck when you play him. That's broken for the most part, except that I guess you can get them stolen, but that's pretty awesome. I think. I don't remember exactly what the abilities of Lambert and Escal are, but it'd be like a stacking ability. He plays, they play, their abilities play. I mean, that's fantastic. I'm not sure if they have abilities. I actually don't own those cards yet. But the beauty of it is you can definitely go and check out the cards. So this is the coolest part. Collection. You can go into collection and plan out what you want to buy. But let's go into monsters. Sure. Go down to the gold cards. And so check it out. So I have 130 scraps to craft. And if I want the Caretaker, for example, who's a six siege unit, resurrects any non-gold or non-permadeath unit from an opposing graveyard. From the opposing graveyard. That's pretty brutal. 800 to craft. But if you go into bronze cards, those normal ones, like a Wild Hunt Rider, I could do it right now. 80 scraps to craft. Um, and I have one of those, right? Or do I have... Where are they at? Oh, the Wild Hunt Rider. I think the way it works is you can have four of one type of bronze card in every deck. And I think it goes down for silver. And then you can only have like one gold or something like that of a type. But once you have more than you can use in one deck, you can then make them into scraps and make other cards with it. So there you go. There's the game. There's Gwent in its standalone capacity. I think it's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. I'm having fun with the Nilfgaard deck for now. I've actually tried all of them, but really... It's just a matter of what they gave you with the starting cards because um, you basically need to open up and get lucky on some of these barrels because you need more if you're going to keep up with the rest of the players, even in closed beta. But keep an eye on this game. It's going to come out soon. For you big Gwent fans out there, I think you can still get into closed beta if you want to. So so if you got a love for Gwent, jump in there and play me because uh, I don't think you can beat my awesome Nilfgaard deck, can you? No, it's a starter deck. You can beat it. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of Gwent and what your best deck was. Gosh, mine, I think, was... Uh, was it Nilfgaard? I don't know. I like the other abilities, I think, the ones that allowed you to respawn other units. But uh, Nilfgaard isn't bad. It's just switching out for what you already have isn't nearly as cool as stealing your opponent's cards. <laughs> All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time on Drive-By Review.
find me a worthy opponent. Opponent found. Excellent. Amium. Amium. Onward! Attack! 